Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Diatone GTB145. This is a 4 inch toothpick powered by Diatone Mamba 1404, 3650 kV motors, Jim Fan 4023 tri bladed props, flight controller is the Diatone F405, the ESC is the Mamba F430, which is a 4 in 1 30 amp ESC, our FPV camera is the Cadix Baby Rattel, which is a really nice camera, the VTX is the Diatone Mamba TX400, which is power switchable up to 400 milliwatts, Diatone quads are plug and play, so you have to add your receiver. Mine is tucked away down in here, and it is the FR Sky RXSR. Attached, we'll find a 35 volt, 470 microfarad capacitor. TPU mounting for our antennas. Zip ties to secure our motor wires down. Comes with two battery straps, extra zip ties, additional antenna tube, a buzzer. I believe this little piece is to secure your UFL antenna for your VTX. So this is a spare. Extra wiring harness from your flight controller to your ESC. Battery mat. Information cards on your flight control stack. In my case, I still have a spare wiring harness for a receiver. Card on wiring your receiver and a bit on the frame. Diatone also sent this. It's huge. Carbon fiber used on the arms is three millimeters thick and the arms at its narrowest point is almost seven millimeters wide. Very bottom plate looks to be 1.5 millimeters. Same as the next sandwich plate. Camera pod plates are 1.5 millimeters. It weighs 135 grams. I flew it on this older Tattoo 850 milliamp 3S battery, which brings the weight up to almost 218 grams. So this is not my best flight, but it's a flight I wanted to show you mainly because, well, Something that surprised me as I was out flying, I had kind of an oh no moment. And also, I'm going to brag on my daughter a little bit, our 12 year old. Uh, she, on her own fruition, and she does this from time to time, went out to do some weeding. And uh, to my surprise, as I was flying around, um, I didn't spot her initially, but did a few more times. Now, again, this is on 3S, and the design behind this seems to be mainly about flight time and not necessarily trying to reap maximum performance on this quad because. I think it would fly on 4S just fine. Uh, I would probably use a smaller battery like a 650 on 4S and you've probably seen that lime green or kind of yellow dot over there and that is her doing some weeding. She likes to be productive. I think personally she's awful hard on herself. She thinks sometimes she relaxes too much and um, if I compare her to our other two kids, that's not the case at all. So maybe one day as an adult, uh, she can look back on this video and know that even as a 12 year old, she was a hard working kid. But the flight, as you can see, I can handle it in my backyard just fine. We're gonna fly for over five minutes and I am flying on an older battery. So you may find in your instance, if you're using a battery that's newer, maybe doesn't have quite as many cycles on it or it's just a different battery in general, your flight performance might be better as well as your flight time. So that's something to keep in mind. As far as the tune goes, it could be the battery weight because they do suggest flying this on a 1000 milliamp 3S battery. Let me stop there as we're gonna have our oh no moment. I had that lined up and then as I kind of floated I drifted too far over the trees and I kept riding it out and then as I punched underneath the tree I was like ah, I gotta get out of here real quick so quick pitch up hard throttle try to work my way out of there uh, and I also clip a branch a little bit later or I already did I may have missed it as I was talking about my daughter so back to the tune uh, because I'm flying it on an 850 the weight may have thrown the tune off just a touch. You may not even notice it so much in the video, but it's something that I noticed when I was flying it, that sometimes it doesn't handle the prop wash or the oscillations great. It handles it pretty well. Uh, and you can fly around those things with, with throttle control as well. You know, when you get to those moments where you might have an oscillation, you give it more throttle. Uh, say when you're doing a hard 180 turn where you're almost flying backwards into the turn, that's a moment or if you tend to bottom out too much when you do punch outs, when you're coming back on the dive, if you tend to bottom out, in other words, you flatten out before you start to apply throttle, that's another area where we see it. Really those, in my opinion, are piloting issues where we need to uh, work on our flight skills rather than blaming the tune on the quad because it's pretty rare on quads that you're gonna have a tune that's gonna handle a lot of pilot air. Uh, so I, don't, I do that a few times in this video, and you're going to probably notice that, but I wanted to call out the fact that this was designed for a 1000 milliamp 3S battery, and I'm flying it on an 850. Also, battery weight, not just the size and the weight, but batteries don't always weigh the same, so depending upon what the tune was worked out for. It's a minor thing. I'm being very nitpicky, but I thought I should bring it up because you can hear it in the audio. Also, I get a lot of questions about how do I get sound on my quad like your videos. This is not sound from the quad. This is from a camera, actually a cell phone that's sitting on the table right from where I take off. I do a clap sync like they do in the movies in order to sync up in editing. 
So I've combined the DVR from the flight footage from the goggles to that cell phone in order to be able to get this flight footage. So this does not come with sound natively. And typically the sound that you get on quads isn't very good unless you get it from say a GoPro camera which has excellent audio quality for that sort of thing. This is the sound that you hear as the pilot. That's what I'm trying to replicate so you know what it sounds like in the space rather than from the quad. Uh, you see we're getting a little bit of a battery voltage warning and I'm going to ride this out to where we come in just a little bit over 3.5 volts per cell. Uh, we'll end up flying for another minute here. Unfortunately in this flight I don't do much in the terms of kind of free flight acro. I do the punches over the house that I always do. Uh, I did a power loop there. Uh, we go from both sides, the chimney side and the, the shed side of the house, and we punch out and over. It doesn't have that throw you back in the chair sort of pop on the throttle. It, you more ride it. it. It's good, but it's just not great. And I think if you're wanting just outright power and speed, this might not be what you're looking for. But if you're looking for flight time, this might be something that you want. Also, Diatone has a pretty good reputation in the hobby, so that might be something that is of interest to you as well. So not the cleanest flight I've ever had with this quad, nor have we seen on the channel, but a flight that I thought was interesting because, you know, I've got my daughter out there, and I had a moment there that was a little bit of a panic moment, and I wanted to share that with you because not all flights are great, not all flights uh, do I always have the uh, memory retention in order to do all the things that we typically do on this channel. But you see there we've ended the flight. We come in at 5 minutes and 16 seconds. We pop back to the normal view and we've got 3.56 volts per cell so we could have flown a touch longer even. Something that I would hoped to touch on during the flight video but I got a little long winded there and didn't do it is the battery strap situation. Let me undo this. So the arms go through so you can't thread this underneath this bottom plate. And not that that's a problem or anything, but there's a screw. Let me see if I can get enough room to where you can see it. See, there's that screw right there that kind of locks everything in together. And so your battery strap kind of goes over that and it pumps that up. Now, I don't like securing my battery with just the strap to itself. I want to secure it with the strap to something else. So you can see I've double layered the mat that they include. Unfortunately, the second layer doesn't stick great. You know, it's got this mesh finish to it, so there's not a lot of surface area to it to stick to. Actually, one of my other pieces keeps falling off regularly, so I've got it here on my desk. I would suggest if you have it some thick battery map it battery mat excuse me uh, it doesn't have to be super thick but this stuff is relatively thin that's why I've double layered it that's the way that I like to secure my battery I also secured down the battery lead over here I didn't want it tugging or this wire moving around because the capacitor is secured to the wire and if you're moving your battery wire around that capacitor could it has the potential to maybe snap off the wires or come loose internally to the capacitor to where it's less effective. So I wanted this segment to all be secured so I don't have uh, the possibility that that would break. We do have... Oh, another piece fell off just now. Huh. We do have buttons on our VT. Excuse me, I bumped the camera there. Uh, so if you wanted to, I guess you could use these but you'd have to disable smart audio otherwise it would just keep going back to whatever the smart audio setting was um, so buttons are there as kind of a fail safe i guess if smart audio stops working for you i'm not a huge fan of using zip ties anymore on the arms to secure down because you can see they're, they're kind of loose uh, especially when you have arms that aren't real consistent Carbon fiber is kind of slick when he has this plastic zip tie on there, so they tend to move around quite a bit. I would prefer they use some of that tape that I like to use uh, on quads, but they did at least secure them down. It's just something that you will want to note is that, you know, before you take off and fly, kind of shove them up, create some tension. Uh, and it's because, yeah, again, carbon fiber is slick, uh, especially when it comes to plastic, so it doesn't really have anything to bite on to make sure it stays in these positions. So you just want to shove them up as best you can uh, before each flight. Of course, with the battery lead secured here, I don't find this one moves around. Nice camera choice, clean design. We've got, uh, I should note here on the bottom, uh, hopefully you can see that. I always forget what these nuts are called, but it's part of the mechanism to securing everything down so that the stack isn't going to twist or really be a, a breaking point. It shouldn't be a central breaking point. I think you'd be much more likely to break an arm before you would bust the stack. Of course, if you sear something, if you go try to go under a vertical 
bar or something and it catches it just right the lever point you could end up bending all four posts possibly but i would think that would be a pretty severe at speed crash i think commonly for most stuff you would be doing you'd be more likely to damage an arm but that's again it's going to depend on your flying space your flying environment are you crashing into bricks and and cement or are you crashing into dirt and trees also a minor note you've got a little bit of soft mounting in here so that helps keep vibration out of your flight controller it is a little bit of a pain in order to not take everything apart a lot in order to get your receiver tucked down in there uh, you can see hopefully you can see i've got mine squirreled away uh, just above the vtx and before that top plate that secures the pod the milling on this carbon plates they are very tight tolerances i actually had when I took this apart in order to get my receiver in there, I did have to use um, a tool in order to kind of squeeze that off. Very tight milling, which is good. You know, when you don't have any movement, then you're less likely to get a snappage of your carb in there. So it's very tight. Uh, clean printing on this uh, back part that secures our VTX. And then we have uh, two posts or standoffs in here that secure that whole print. So that shouldn't be moving around. Nice and secure feeling to it. Let's take the props off real quick to take a look at those. So as you can see there, I mentioned it in the quick specs. There's a little plastic piece that goes inside and it creates the two holes that we need in order to have a good tight connection down to our motor. I've left the screws in the top so that you could see that. And then we have our center post. It's really hard to see because this piece is clear, but there is a center hole for the post on the motor as well as two holes on each side uh, it fills in on the other holes if you can see that this is where our screws go these are filled in by that plastic piece that is in there and the plastic pieces do fit very very tight matter of fact i had a little bit of a trouble don't use like a pair of pliers or anything and force it down in there because that will cause that plastic on either the prop or the piece that's inserted to deform and you don't want that so use some finesse don't go in at a great angle try to go straight down in there with this plastic piece and it will slide in once you get it right fairly easily uh, but I would not suggest using any sort of great force to get that plastic piece inside the prop because it could create a little bit of a looseness. So I think where this one comes in is where you want to stay under that 250 gram limit and you're not interested in carrying any sort of extra camera for HD recording and you want good long flight times without having to lunk around a giant battery. So if that's the category you find yourself in. Take a look at this Dytone GTB 154. And if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.